Kelsey Zeiser. I'm a senior editor at Light Reading, and we're here at the Big 5G event in Austin. And I'm joined by Max Silver with Mettel. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you again. Yeah, thanks for joining me. My pleasure. Um, so you were recently on a panel today about enterprise 5G. Can you give us some sure. little highlights from that? Yeah, so it was really around go-to-market strategy uh, for 5G-based offerings. And I can give you my viewpoint on it is sure. <laughs> you have to bundle it as a service. Uh, anything that you do as a service ultimately achieves the goal for the customer. Um, customers don't really care about whether it's 4G or, or, or 5G or 6G. Uh, they just want it as a usable device and they want it as a usable solution. So a lot of what we do and a lot of the programs we build at Metel are really around providing everything as a service. Mm -hmm. um, and that means bundled with security, uh, over the air enrollment, everything that's part of delivering a device either to a person or a machine, whether it's IoT based or whether it's Think of a smartphone, a laptop, a tablet, anything like that delivered as a service. Right, and I think you have a new a laptop as a service that's part of your mobile device as a service, right? Can you tell us uh, what, what's going on there? Sure, so a lot of what we do is, uh, because we service businesses, primarily medium to large and uh, government customers, a lot of what we do is we tie into the process of a new employee joining a new organization. So they kind of click, they, they send us uh, typically a ticket through their internal ticketing system or they click to buy right on our portal and they want that device delivered to the user on the day that the user starts uh, their hire date. Uh, and it, it needs to be delivered anywhere, right? Because right. we, we don't really know where users are anymore. <laughs> Office, home, home, a hybrid, the beach, it, in a at the airport. Yeah, we're not really I heard sure. That's a new thing. Yeah. That the claw like, yeah, uh, yeah. That, that is. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's ever evolving, is the way I always look at it. But wherever they are, they need a usable device delivered to them. Uh, and up until now, it's been primarily tablets, smartphones. Uh, there, there's been this huge requirement for laptops as well, or connected laptops, and in our case, 5G connected laptops, because uh, companies, as they're going through these uh, economic cycles now, have less and less resources, and it's still a, a significant problem within a corporation. Mm -hmm. You can get your phone same day, the day you start, laptops sometimes could take up to two weeks uh, if you've joined an organization in the last couple of years. Uh, so, so essentially, uh, providing the same service delivery model that we do for smartphones with over-the-air enrollment, but now doing it for laptops. So that Monday comes around, the user opens up their box, they got a shiny new smartphone, and now they've got a fully ready usable laptop that's also a 5G connected laptop. Mm -hmm. So it's good for when they're in their home or in the office using Wi-Fi or when they're on the road using a 5G secure connection. Are there any other um, uh, new or uh, recently updated managed services within Mettel, maybe around security? I know that can be challenging, especially for small to mid-sized businesses. Um, so having you know a, a service provider like yeah. Mettel um, to assist in that is uh, you know probably yeah. a big benefit to them. <laughs> for for sure, and that and that's really part of how we deliver our MDAS or mobile device as a service offering. It's not just a device with service. It's pre-enrollment, and pre-enrollment means that when you first turn on the phone and applications start to load, part of that application stack is security. So the device is locked down. It's very specific to the purpose for what, you, what it needs to be used. And most importantly, it's protecting the corporate network from harm coming in through end users downloading apps, mm -hmm. when, even when they're not supposed to. Uh, but just having that protection layer. So we're really bundling the security aspect of it as well as everything else that the user requires on that smartphone, tablet, and now laptop as well. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else in the uh, kind of field of IoT that, that you're looking yeah. forward to that Mattel's working on? Yeah, so a big project for us this year is really expanding on our capabilities for what we call our single SIM product. And our single SIM product is a multi-carrier or multi-MZ product delivered on a physical SIM card or a eSIM activation. Uh, and what it does is it allows uh, the user as they're moving around from one geography to, to the next to actually switch networks so that they're not only getting 5G, they're now getting the best available 5G in that specific area. And that's worked really well for uh, anything that's a machine to machine or IoT based product, either moving in a vehicle or being shipped to a location where you don't know at the time of manufacturing where it's gonna end up. So the product does really well for that. 
we're now building our 2.0 uh, product offering for that single SIM product, and that's really a, uh, an embedded core that's going to allow us to ingest more than just traditional cellular solutions. So now we can bundle in things like private 5G with public 5G. We can ingest things like um, uh, CBRS or LoRaWAN or anything else to again provide a better experience to the customer, in this case the corporation that's trying to deploy and then maintain a stable environment around IoT devices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that kind of um, dovetails off uh, some discussions this morning um, during the keynotes about um, how best to monetize 5G. I feel like the industry is still kind of figuring that out a little bit, but um, you know, IoT and private networks um, seem like there's some some opportunity there. Um, yeah. So it'd be interesting to see how those develop. Yeah, it was it was interesting. The panel I was on, the conclusion was, you know, go back to the old. Uh, you know, process of KISS, you know, keep yeah. it simple. Stuff. <laughs> right. So if you simplify, if you simplify the way you deliver services enough for customers, mm -hmm. the use cases always come out. So instead of trying to look for use cases, we try to look for ways where customers have an easy button, where customers don't have to think about four or five different systems and how to make them all work together. Or in the case of IoT, customers don't have to make a determination up front of what network is going to work best in that region or for that application? We try to provide a product where it's you know essentially the easy button for yeah. them. Because uh, it seems like they don't always want to know how it works, but they do want it to work, and they'll let you know when it doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> they sure. do a really good job of letting you know that. <laughs> right? Yeah, they get really loud. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, anything else that you're looking forward to this week? Any any other um, you know uh, trends or, or topics that have come up in discussions? I just think it's interesting uh, for myself, kind of coming from the wireless side of the world, is we're starting to see, and 5G is really arming. Uh, this coming together of wired and wireless, a lot of the conversations are not just about 5G, they're about how are you implementing Wi-Fi, how are you implementing things like SD-WAN networks as part of that con connectivity strategy. So it's interesting to see you know, an industry that was almost you know, at each other's throat maybe three, four years ago is now working together and really delivering a better overall use case. The other thing that I was shocked by when we started working on this about four years ago is 5G is now helping us resolve uh, the issue of POTS lines, copper lines going away. Mm -hmm. uh, copper, the copper infrastructure is being decommissioned finally, thanks to the FCC's <laughs> approval, uh, which, which is important because you know even the, the hole we're in right now, the alarm lines, the fire uh, alarm sensors mm -hmm. are all uh, being uh, essentially communicated back to monitoring stations using traditional copper lines. That's what's considered fire code. Uh, and now that infrastructure is going away, so we're actually using wireless and some technology, some digital transformation or POTS transformation uh, technology to actually provide a replacement solution for every physical commercial structure, uh, not you know certainly in the United States, but in many cases globally as well. So I never thought wireless would be something that would replace the original, you know, 100 plus year old right. technology of copper lines, but yeah. that's that's what keeps this industri industry so much fun. We never know what we're going to solve for next. Exactly, yeah, that's a really great example. Um, and it is interesting to see the convergence of wireless and wired, um, the, you know, big discussion this week about that. So thanks sure. so much for joining me. It's great Thank to you see you. Thank you for having me. Always great to see you. Appreciate it. <laughs>